Hi, this is Al Williams of Sunset Hill Solutions. This video is a follow-up to my report bursting and distribution video tutorial. The difference with this uh, video is that I'll be explaining how to create a publication to send to dynamic recipients. So this would be the situation where you're going to burst a report and send it to email addresses outside of your organization or users within your organization who aren't business objects users. At the end of the video, I'll just uh, spend a couple minutes explaining that there are some third-party alternatives that provide enhanced functionality for report bursting and distribution for business objects. Okay, before we get started, I should mention that if you haven't had a look at my previous video on this topic, report bursting and distribution, it may be a good idea just to, to watch that one to get familiar with some of the concepts. So I'm going to go right in here now into Profiles because we're going to start to create our dynamic publication. So I'm going to go into Profiles. Now I'll click on the new, new Profile icon. I'm going to call this eFashion Sales by Store. Click OK. I'll go in here and set the profile targets. I'll click on the Add button here, pick the eFashion Universe, and the object we want is the store name. Go to Profile Values now. I'll add a profile value. So I'll click on Add to add a profile value. Create the filter expression down here, Web Intelligence Formula Expression. Click Formula Editor, and we'll select all of the stores. Again, we're using eFashion as the universe as the basis for this demo. Now, if I click OK, it tells me I have to select at least one user or group for this profile. So even though this is a, a dynamic publication or a dynamic profile that's going to be sent to users outside the organization, I do have to create it select a user or group uh, for the profile values page here. So I'm going to go ahead and select the same group that we used in our previous example in the first video. Click OK and OK and I'll close this now. Let's switch over to BI Launchpad and I'll show you the report we're going to use for this example. Sales by Store Manager so basically this is a breakdown by store because there is one manager per store. So I got this first store manager and the store name and the total sales for each of the product lines. So if I go to the next page, see there's a page for every for every store slash store manager. When we create the publication to send to dynamic recipients, we have to have a field in the query in the report we've chosen that contains an email address and since we don't have that in the default eFashion universe what I've done is I've opened up the eFashion universe and I've made a small change so under the manager name I've added a detail item here and it's just a string so this is an email account that I have and it's going to assign this email account to each of the managers. So just for the purposes of this demo, I want to make sure you understand that I did make a small change to the eFashion universe. Okay, we're back in BIA Launchpad. I'm in my Publications folder. I'm going to go ahead and create a new publication. I'm going to call this Sales by Store. And I pick a source document. That will be the report that I just showed you which is in Report Bursting Sales by Store Manager. Click OK. OK, now I'm going to go into, I'm going to skip Enterprise Recipients because this report is going to be sent to external recipients. I'm going to click on Dynamic Recipients. I have to choose a source for the Dynamic Recipients, which will be a Web Intelligence report. Now I have to select the, re the report. So this is the same report that we picked in the uh, in the previous step. Sales by store manager. When I click OK, 
now it's saying select the, the data source name. So this is the there's only one query in this report, and that the default name was query one. Now at this point, I select the recipient identifier and full name, which will be manager's name, and email will be the email object that I created in the eFashion universe. You have the option of unchecking the use entire list checkbox and only sending it to the recipients you want. We'll send it to all of the store managers. So now I want to click on personalization and I want to add the report field here, store name and dynamic recipient mapping, also store name. It's important that you don't forget this step. The formats, I will select PDF, Adobe Acrobat. For destinations, we're going to send it by email. So I filled in some of the options here, the from address. By default, the to email address is the email address placeholder. And the subject, I just put report delivery notice for, and then the name of the recipient. And in the message, I just said, please be advised that your report is attached to this email. I'm not going to make any more changes to the destinations. I'm going to save this again. Let's have a look at the additional options for prompts. This report has a prompt for a year. I guess I, I'll change it just for the sake of argument. I'll change it to 2005. Just uh, want to make no note here that if you want to have a dynamic prompt for your report, please have a look at my um, dynamic default day prompt videos. There's two of them. It explains how you can have reports that have dynamic prompts based on certain variables. So if you weren't aware, with publications, they can be scheduled just like you can schedule Web Intelligence or Crystal Reports. You can have events like trigger, trigger files, for example. Um, quite often, you, you would want to schedule these. You know, They may be a monthly report or a weekly report, and you can automate that process by scheduling them. In this case, I'm just going to save and close here. And I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to schedule this new publication to run now. I'll pause the video while it finishes. So we can see that the publication did run successfully. I'll close this window and we'll go to my inbox. So I had sent all of these to one email address if you recall and there were 13 store managers. 13 stores, 13 store managers. If I expand this now I have 13 emails, one for each store manager. Let's have a look at one of them here. I'll view this PDF file. And we can see this is the report for John Bennett for the eFashion Colorado Springs store. Let's just have a look at the next one. Just to make sure it is another store manager. Yes, this is for another store manager from Los Angeles. So our dynamic recipient option for our publication worked. So far in the two videos I've created um, focusing on report bursting and distribution in Business Objects 4, we've created profiles in the Central Management Console and we've created publications to facilitate report bursting and distribution both internally and externally. So what we focused on so far obviously has been the core functionality that's available in Business Objects 4. There are however uh, other options if you're interested in more advanced functionality. So there's at least two companies that offer products that will give you enhanced functionality for report bursting and distribution. Um, one that I'm aware of and I'm going to talk about some of their features because I've had more exposure to it is a product called InfoBurst and the company that makes this software is called InfoCell and um, I'll talk a little bit more about some of the advanced functionality there and just to be fair it's also a company called Apos and they have they also have a um, a solution for report bursting and distribution. But as mentioned, I've had more exposure to the InfoSol products. So I'll just talk about some of the features available in this product in particular that aren't available in business objects. Some of the features of the InfoBurst product that stand out, at least for me, are the fact that you can 
um, use InfoSol to distribute dashboards, which cannot be done in Business Objects 4, at least at this point. Also, if you're using SQL Server reporting services, you can use InfoSol's product to distribute those types of reports as well. In addition, in terms of the file types that can be um, distributed, Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint are not options available in Business Objects 4. Some of the other options are to be able to deliver reports in delimited text format. If you want to send a report as a PNG image. If you want to compress and encrypt the output, with Business Objects 4 you can compress the output into a zip file, but you cannot encrypt it, so this is a real good functionality in terms of security. In terms of the delivery options for this product, uh, as you can see, there's more options available in this InfoSol product. For example, inline HTML report content. You can send reports directly to a network printer, which isn't available in Business Objects 4. You can ship publish it to SharePoint, which is really nice for companies that use SharePoint, uh, WebDAV, a whole pile of options not available in Business Objects 4, but available in products like InfoSol's InfoBurst. As mentioned earlier, uh, one of the nice benefits of um, some of the third-party alternatives like InfoBurst is the fact that you can deliver dashboards, um, publish them out to users internally or externally can't do that with Business Objects 4, you're limited to Crystal Reports and Web Intelligence Reports, at least at the present time. And some of the additional features, some detailed logging uh, available with InfoBurst. And the big one for me is this API and shell interface. So it exposes an API if you have developers that want to extend the functionality of the product even further. So I hope you can see that if you have requirements not handled by Business Objects 4, feel free to check out products like InfoBurst and the product available from APOS that handles publishing. Again, I wasn't very aware of uh, some their functionality, but I had been exposed to InfoBurst, which is why I focus on some of their functionality. And there may be others out there as well, in all fairness. So this was Al Williams of Sunset Hill Solutions. I hope that this video was informative and gave you some good information on the report bursting and distribution capabilities of Business Objects 4, and also to let you know there are third-party alternatives that offer enhanced functionality in this area. Thanks for watching.